Welcome to Windows on the World, bringing you cutting edge news, empowering information and no conspiracy theories. On tonight's show. So Nick Hallstrom, welcome to Windows on the World. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Mark. Well, we've been discussing this theory that's been put around and it seems to be very prevalent amongst alternative research now and it came from nowhere. We're talking about this kind of medieval idea of flat earth and it seems to have made this massive resurgence. Why do you think that is, Nick? It is bizarre, Mark. I don't think it's medieval. In medieval times, I think people, certainly astronomers, believed that the earth was spherical. But there were some people who thought it was flat, wasn't it? With Christopher Columbus, there was a fear that he might fall off the edge, you know. So there was a certain popular degree of belief in a flat earth, yeah. Basically, to find a flat earth theory, you have to go back two and a half thousand years to the Book of Isaiah or the cosmology of ancient Egypt or something, you know. And uh, I find it incredibly strange that suddenly, wherever you go, people are now are saying, well, don't you realise the earth is flat? I know, it's, it's very strange. But it's, that's what I'm saying, really. It came from nowhere. Um, about what, 18 months ago, no longer than that. I hadn't really heard it before. Well, that. I've never heard anyone in my entire life say it until about three months ago. And suddenly people were, were telling me this and saying, don't you realise this? Don't you realise that? I said, well, no, I don't actually. And um, I wonder if it's uh, due to absence of experience of the night sky, Mark. Because I think for us ordinary folk who don't get out into space or anything, that is your primary experience of, of a spherical Earth, OK? If you, if you stay up at night, and perhaps um, if we're talking to anyone here who thinks that the, the Earth is flat, you'll notice the stars will rise. They slowly rise, and they move across the sky, and they set again. And they rise in such a way that they're circling around the pole star. Now, that motion which you see if you stay up all night is caused not by the stars in the heaven going round, but by the Earth rotating, OK? And that pole star, which you see, which is the point that doesn't move in the sky, that is the axis of the Earth uh, around which the Earth rotates, OK? Now, if you go to a different latitude, if you go further north or south, you'll see that pole star position change. The further you go north, the higher the pole star is in the sky. The further you go south, the lower it is in the sky. Now, that is due to the uh, curvature of the Earth, and when you go south beyond the equator, it disappears altogether. You can no longer see the pole star at all, okay? That is because we dwell on a sphere. When you go to the southern hemisphere, you see a different immovable part of the sky, the southern cross, around the southern cross where, where all the um, stars revolve around. And that is because you're on the other part of a spherical Earth. And uh, what you see with the sun journey across the sky every day, that is the same experience in the daytime as we have the stars at night, that uh, that rotation is caused by the Earth moving round, a rotational Earth. That's really interesting, Nick, because that's not something that the flat Earthers really talk about. Kind of inference that everything is fake or it's a hologram. Yeah, this this yeah. seems to be the, the main thrust of it, as far as I can tell. Yeah. I've listened to quite a lot of this. Thing. Yeah, I agree with you, Mark. I think we live in an age when politicians will talk dreadful untruths and astronomers can't really say anything that means stuff to ordinary people. This is the I've been a member of Astronomy Society for a long time, and I feel astronomers have lost touch with ordinary people. And, and without doubt, this new theory coming is an expression of that, that, that astronomers have, have lost touch with ordinary people. I mean, the last astronomer 
to have believed that the Earth didn't move was Tycho Brahe, okay? Way back at the beginning of the 17th century. And he believed that all the stars of heaven revolved around us every day. Uh, and the stars, therefore, were stuck on some sort of dome. Now, I don't think you'd want to ask flat earthers, do they flat earthers, what exactly they believe here? Because I think they don't have too much experience of the night sky. They, they, they wouldn't want to say, say too much about it. But... Um, but they tend to believe that maybe some sort of dome is above us or um, that, that what we've been told isn't real, you know. This is why I've heard Nick, and I was listening to a very lengthy interview on Coast to Coast Radio. All right. And this guy was saying that basically we're living in a Truman show and the whole thing's a hologram, but he didn't come up with one fact to back up anything he was saying. So... I, I, that's one thing I cannot understand is how this thing's got so big so quickly and people are taking it so seriously without proper analysis. Yeah. Well, there are, as I understand, two things that modern flat earthers will tell you. Uh, first of all, that uh, if you look at an expanse of water, you will not see the, the, the curvature on it. And secondly, that you can't go over the South Pole. That there's some sort of boundary or limit at the South Pole that you can't go over. Okay, taking the first of these, the curvature of the Earth means that if over a six-mile expanse, uh, the water, the curvature of the Earth means that the water goes up about 24 feet in that six miles. So if you look six miles, you won't be able to see if you're uh, at the shore six miles away, you won't be able to see the shoreline because of that curve which goes up 24 feet. Now that's an experimental uh, issue, which I would be all in favour of school science lessons grappling with. I think uh, basic science should grapple with this kind of thing. Do we live on a curved sphere or a flat earth? And here's a nice experiment we can all do to test it. There's something called the Bedford Flats, where an experiment of this kind was done. Okay, that they put a pole up in the middle, one each end with, with markers, uh, and you could see whether they're all in line or not. Now my understanding was that this was the result of this experiment was published and it showed that they were not in line. It showed that the middle was higher as you'd expect from the curvature of the Earth. And I'm not aware of any other published account of an experiment of, of, of this kind. But certainly the flat Earth people say that you can see across expanses of water in a way that you shouldn't be able to if the Earth was curved. So this is an experimental issue and, and let's welcome... Um, basic basic down-to-earth experiments on this i think it'd be very good for uh, astronomers to do experiments like this that make sense to ordinary people okay for a change yeah as regards the other thing of not flying over the south pole uh, i i talked to various people uh, uh, um, pilots and and and, and, and they so they confirm this they confirm that you can't fly over the south pole um and that military the military will stop you now, there may be bases on the South Pole, I don't know, but um, I, I, I would suggest this doesn't show that the Earth is, is, is flat. The fact that, that uh, on that modern belief, there's some sort of terrific barrier around the edge of the Earth, which is the, the South Pole, and the North Pole's in the middle of the Earth. It's sort of quite a Terry Pratchett type of world, really. It is, and I think it ties in very much with that, with this whole idea that... The conspiracy world has, has now included so many conspiracies that this is the conspiracy that could actually trash all other research in the respect that, oh, you're one of those flat earthers. I think Obama even referred to it. Uh -huh. So I think this is a psychological operation. But what's very interesting and actually a bit sad is that it seems to de be dividing people mm -hmm. over this who mm -hmm. were previously would have been getting on and saying okay let's look at false flag terror let's look at things that we can actually analyze oh, um, as priority over everything else apparently i mean the question of whether they went to the moon there's more and more people not believing they went to the moon i mean i'm a re reactionary old fuddy-duddy mark and as you know i recently published something saying actually they did go to the moon now a lot of people don't believe me on this so i'm finding it very hard to maintain that view i must say uh, but but uh, that the sceptical sceptical of them going to the moon just does feed into the flat Earth story that they say all the, the photos of the Earth from space are faked, or all the they claim that the spherical pictures of the Earth 
which I think is a terribly important moment of self-knowledge when the Earth inhabitants of the Earth see themselves from the outside. We see the lovely emerald blue sphere of the Earth. I think that's a terribly important moment in our human development, but personally. Uh, and uh, I don't accept that it's a fake picture at all. Okay, that is Ga Gaia, she, Mother Earth. That's what she looks like from space. And we experience the miracle of Earth holding itself in balance in the depths of space with the heat and cold and water. And uh, I, I think that's an absolute real experience that the human race had in the 20th century. Uh, but the, fl the flat Earth people say that is that, that is made up images, uh, computer generated uh, and, 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 and so forth. Um, and uh, I, I think this reflects the uh, absence of public uh, communication of what science is about. Uh, uh, we need a dialogue, you know. If somebody, uh, is there someone prepared to show us that these are real images and where they come from? Well, exactly, and science just means that something's been proved with facts, with a series of facts, and analysed. So the, the thing with the NASA pictures is that we know that some of the moon landing pictures were not taken on the moon. Hmm. We can pretty right, much yeah. assume okay, that yeah, because yeah. of the way they were composed and right, lighted. Right, yeah, yeah, it seems so, yeah. Um, now, the problem is with th this flat earth thing hmm. is we can, we, can, we can openly say that, okay, NASA, yeah, they do lie. They have retouched photographs from Mars and the moon. Um, we, we, the pictures that were meant to be taken on the moon weren't taken on the moon, but what they're trying now to do is make it look as though the whole thing's a lie. And that thing's very dangerous because we, as people who are analysing things, we're going to get lumped in to one compartment now. In other words, it's a conspiracy theory. Yeah. And it's just like that flat earth stuff. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, um, let's consider what makes night and day we may go something very, very primary because with the flat earth thing I don't think they can explain why it gets dark at all I think that's a slight hitch in their theory if you ask a flat earther um, why is it cold at the north and south pole and why is it hot at the equator you know they will say oh well the sun goes round the sun is small the sun and moon are small and they're just above the clouds and they go around around the equator once a day. I think it has to be once a day, doesn't it? I think they go around once a day on this flat earth theory. And they travel around the equator. And they may, they're all a bit expands and contracts a bit with the, with the seasons. So that's the loony crackpot answer you get about where the sun is on the flat earth theory, okay? That it's a little way above the, the earth. It's small. And it travels around above, more or less above the equator, I think once a day, okay? So, on that theory, it should get lighter and darker in the day and uh, over 24 hours. W where does the night come from? So I asked this guy, he'd given a talk about the flat earth, right? I said, how come we get darkness at night? I said, oh, the beam of the sun is pointing away from you. I said, what, the beam of the sun? So somehow they're imagining there's some beam of sunlight that points towards you in the daytime and points away at night time. So I said, are you saying that the sun is above the horizon at night time, but we just don't see it? And, um, well, it wasn't very clear what, what, what you replied. Um, but we could make a comparison here, possibly, of, of earlier flat earth theories, say that of ancient Egypt, which I think it's fair to call flat, flat Earth. In that case, the sun rises above the horizon and then it sets at night. And then it sets at night time, it journeys on a bark under, in the underworld, through the underworld. So it rises again, okay? Now, that, that was the cosmology of ancient Egypt. Okay, so they said what happened to the sun. Uh, uh, and nowadays, we've got a, this thing that's just appeared. It seems to be all over the place. It doesn't have, I don't think it has a sunset. I don't think the sun sets. Goodness knows what the moon's supposed to do, but the sun moves around in the sky above us. And um, I'll tell you what it reminds me of, Mark. You know those old paintings where you depict the radiance of the sun shining through the clouds and the beams of the sun would come out in different directions. You sometimes see this. And it looks as if the sun is only just above the clouds. 
okay uh, and that's a kind of used to be a sort of picture of, of, of the heavens that old painters used to do um i think the flat earth people really believe that the sun is a little way above the clouds it's small and uh so in other words that they're not believing in the law of gravity okay no that's right the other thing i've heard is that it's just a disc a disc so it's actually not a sphere which would fit in with the flat earth theory so the sun's flat as well that's <laughs> right really, yeah okay well sun does actually revolve once every 27 days um the moon also revolves uh, and uh we can see the planets revolve. See Jupiter revolving. Okay, you can see Jupiter spheric. Jupiter is slightly flattened because the great speed with which it rotates in space, once every ten hours, ten hours. Yeah, so it's slightly flattened. It's very much, again, it's very much distended at the equator, whereas Earth is only very, very slightly distended at the equator. Okay. Now yeah, that's another thing the flat Earth people have uh, say to me. Oh, the speed. If you're on the equator, you're going around a thousand miles an hour. Well, that's impossible. You'd fall off the Earth if you're going around that speed. Well, this is just basic and rather boring Newtonian physics. You know, the Earth is revolving once in 24 hours, and that means gravity is slightly less at the equator. But it's only about less than 1%. I mean, just do the maths, you know. People did used to notice that clocks, grandfather clocks, went slower at the equator than they did here. And that was a problem, and it was solved by Newton's theory of gravity. It's just some rather boring maths, but it does actually work out and, and this world does seem to be governed by Newtonian physics pretty damn well, okay? And that explains why you've got slightly less gravity on the equator. But uh, if, if you watch these flat earth, thing, theory, uh, flat earth videos, they find it unable to believe that, say, at the equator you're spinning around a thousand miles an hour and the earth is also spinning around the sun at a terrific rate. And then the sun is moving through the galaxy. Well, there are all different forms of relative motion, that, but they don't affect us in terms of the life that we experience. We don't experience them. We're, we are here on the Earth, and the clouds are above us, and we don't notice any of this motion, OK? Um, and, uh, again, this is quite simple physics. There's nothing um, weird or anomalous about it, I suggest. But some people do find it difficult to believe and just uh, dwelling on a just the experience that we see the horizon, we see the clouds above us, we, the, we see the sun moving across us. This, the modern flat earth theory is, in a sense, the world that we experience without any abstract thought or reasoning. It, it's, it's what the world immediately looks like to you. So if the sun and moon in the sky, they're quite small, they just move across each day, um, and, and we're not moving. Uh, and... and uh, it's as if people have given up all rational processes uh, and all the complicated stuff science gives us just for this very, very simple thing about the Earth being flat. I mean, it's just in the news now, Mark, of a craft, a NASA craft going out to Pluto, the most distant planet in the solar system, and we're getting a whole lot of detailed photographs of Pluto and Charon. OK, now, has, has something really, really gone out to Pluto? Well, yeah, actually it has, and we are really getting that stuff coming back. And all the science and technology for that really works. Um, and and, and, and uh, so these di those distances are real. Uh, and, and the whole calculation of that mission is done using Newtonian physics, um, acceleration and so on, and w which, which works. So I suggest that we're moving into the space age uh, and we just have to accept that Earth is a sphere in, sp in, in space, um, like the sun and moon. Uh, and... and uh, yeah, it may seem it may seem a bit daunting to some people, but uh, I, I, I suggest that uh, a flat Earth is not the answer to our problems. So Nick, as a, in conclusion now, summing this up, what you seem to be saying mainly is that people aren't taking notice of basic physics here and what's already available, and that if astrologers and astronomers made this stuff more available and easy to understand yeah. then the flat earth theory might not have taken off so quickly is that what you're saying yeah uh, and i think we need basic school science to look at these questions uh for example air, air flights can they go over the south pole what's the quickest way of travel 
uh, and uh, I would think these would would show that we live on a, on a sphere, um, and 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 uh, likewise with the stretches of water, like uh, say a ten mile stretch across some estuary, that um, this must show that the curvature of the Earth, and uh, as far as I know, as far as I've, I've heard, experiments do show this, and um, I would say the photographs from the from the uh, Space, space station we've got uh, going around the Earth show very graphically the the the, uh, the curvature of the Earth. But uh, flat Earthers would say this is some trick of a photographic camera that makes the uh, makes the uh, an apparent curvature that isn't really there. Yeah, I've uh, heard that where people say, "Oh, it's just a fisheye lens." Fisheye lens, yeah. Well, I think that with with a conspiracy this big, I don't think you'd be able to pull it off completely. I think that's the thing with with the other conspiracies where they're co compartmentalized. You could, yeah. But this one doesn't add up to me. And your point about the horizon is very interesting because I've been looking at the edge of the horizon at the sea, mm -hmm. and things on the horizon, if they're going away, do disappear downwards. Mm. And when they appear, they dis they appear upwards that's so right yeah over the horizon i think that's very important and you can see that you can yeah i always thought you could see that from the look across the channel you see boats first appear you see the top of the chimneys of the boats and, and then you see the rest of the boat and that's because of the curvature of the earth that's that's my memory uh, a childhood watching boats coming in across the channel um and 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 that is obviously denied by these flat earth people uh so i think there's an opportunity for for um uh, experimental ch ch checking up this, I would have thought. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it it's definitely comes from a world in which they they hardly believe any of the uh, sources. Uh, I mean, I think we live in an age of, of deep dishonesty when when in, in, in enormous fabricated reality has been being given to us. So, so it is quite difficult to tell what what, it, what is actual and real. Uh, and um, yeah, yeah, but uh, I thought this fundamental experience of of the Earth being a sphere uh, is is uh, is pretty important to us. Uh, and uh, I, I just don't see how you can uh, get out or, or ch change change the tune on that one. Hmm. Not really, unless people are coming and saying, "Well, it's all an illusion. We're living in a Truman Show. It's a hologram." Yeah, this is very lazy thinking, though, isn't it? And I think that's what. This is really about not analysing things properly or taking the time to do that. Yeah, and as we said earlier, a lack of experience of the, of the night sky, I think that is very basic for uh, how we get an experience of what it is that we're, we're dwelling on. That the Earth is a planet like Jupiter or Mars, um, and it fits into that family which moves around, which is part of the solar system. Yes, in a way. This is almost like a backward step for us, really, because if you go back thousands of years, we know that these ancient civilizations that have been written out of history were using the night sky. They knew where everything was. Mm -hmm. They were using cardinal points in the sky. Yeah. So why have we all of a sudden come to this? This is the age of deceit. Yeah, yeah. Well, partly Bible-bashing Christians say, oh... The book of Isaiah says God laid out the lands in a way as, as, a, as if it were flat. And um, is, isn't, that, isn't that good enough for us? I think it might, might be partly that. Mm. It could be, yeah. Well, that's just, that could be just referring to one piece of land. And I'm sure when they said the four corners of the earth, they didn't mean the earth was really a square. No, no, it doesn't sound right. Mm. So in conclusion, Nick, what do you think of flat earth theory? Well, it's the ultimate loony crackpot theory that beats all others, you know. And it represents a real disintegration of the faculty of rational, coherent thought, I would say. Thanks for joining us on Windows on the World. Remember, keep watching those, watching us, watching Windows on the World. We'll see you soon.